Welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry. Welcome back. Okay, so today we're going to be doing the back of the Star Heart pillow. You'll need a 20 inch zipper. Now if you couldn't find a 20 inch, I know some of the, some places have been out of them. You can um, get them through Seaside Quilting. Uh, if you can't get a 20 inch, you can get a 24 inch and they work just fine. But you always, whenever you're doing the back of a pillow, the one that we're uh, making is 18 by 18 to fit a form pillow 20 by 20. You want your zipper to be at least two inches longer than the width of your pillow cover because after we get this sewn in we're going to be cutting the ends off and I'll show you that when we get going. And my zipper is a little Wrinkle that, and we want to start with a nice flat zipper. So I'm going to take my iron and I'm just going to press this on the back side, just straighten it out. just don't want it all wavy so that we can get our measurements accurately. Okay. Now your zipper measures from where the zipper is down to your zipper stop. Not from end to end. And today I'm using a Boheme chalk pen. You can get these through Seaside Quilting as well. I like this one because it's kind of like one of those uh, pencils that you just click on it and the lead comes out. You can buy refills of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tape measure. I don't know if you've seen these lovely tape measures from Seaside Quilting. I love these because I can just hang it up nearby. And you just press a button and it retracts. These things are great. You can get these from Seaside Quilting as well. Okay, so I'm going to take my tape measure, and I'm going to measure from where the zipper is down to the zipper stop. And I've got my 20 inches. So, get this to stay still for me. So at the 10 inch is where I'm going to place a mark. That's the center of my zipper. Now, whatever size zipper that you're using, if you had to use a 24, because that's what you have on hand, that's fine. You'll just go to your halfway mark, and you want to place your mark. And I'm using black zipper, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Darn allergies. Okay, so you just want to do a mark halfway on your zipper. And like I said, the reason why I'm using chalk is because I'm using a black zipper and the white chalk will show up really well on it. And the other thing that you'll need is your backing fabric. 
and I cut my backing fabric 18 inches wide by 24 inches long. Oops, I got this going the wrong way. There we go. And then I cut eight and a half inches off of it on the bottom. <clears throat> and our zipper is going to go through here. And we're going to be using, at the moment, our zipper foot. Let me get my machine set up to do my zipper. Now everyone's machines are a little different. I'm doing a centered zipper. And let me see if I can show you here. So that you can see my machine a little bit. It's hard to show up. My machine has it so that it shows me on a screen which side of the zipper I'm working with. And you're going to have to follow the manual of your machine to see how to use your zipper foot if you've never used one before. My zipper foot has two sides that clip on. So when I'm doing one side of the zipper, I'm going to clip it on this side. When I'm doing the other side of the zipper, I'm going to clip it on this side. And that just changes which side um, the side of my foot is going to press up against the zipper as I sew. Let me get my camera back where I'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. I always have to take a minute to think about this myself, which side I'm going to be pressing up against. And it wasn't going to, it's going to go on the, for the side that we're going to be doing. Oh, let me check this. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to be doing this side, the right side of my zipper. So I have it clipped in my zipper foot to the left side. Um, different machines have different zipper foot, uh, different feet, however you want to say that. Um, so like I said, you'll have to check your manual and check what foot you're using. Um, some of this will play out a little differently how you're going to sew it in with your machine. So I'm going to show you basically how to sew the zipper, but some will change for you just depending on that. So I take my fabric and I fold it in half. And then when I find my half mark of my fabric, I'm just going to finger press the end. Now, if you want, you can um, measure just like what we did with the zipper, and you can make a little mark at the halfway mark, whatever works best for you. And I know some of you will have installed zippers before, and some of you won't, so this might be an all new experience for you, I'm not sure. And then you're going to take your fabric, This is the top of our zipper where the little zipper pull is. And then we have the other end. Get some of this stuff moved out of the way so you can see a little better. So I have the end of my zipper, the zip, uh, sorry, the top of my zipper with the zipper pull and then the end. 
with the zipper stop. So you're going to take your fabric and you want to match up the center of your fabric with the center of your mark. And you're going to lay it over your zipper like so. So your whole zipper will be underneath your fabric. And then I'm going to take some pins once I've, I'm going to first match up my center. So I'm going to be matching up the center fold of my fabric with that center line that I've made on my zipper. And that's where I'm going to place my first pin. Make sure your fabric's laying nice and straight on your zipper when you put your, your pin in. Okay. And then you're just going to keep your fabric straight with the edge of your zipper and place pins or clips. Either one is totally fine as you go down through just to keep that zipper underneath there nice and straight. Actually, I will use some clips. It's a little faster for me. And I can take them off quickly when I'm going through. Now, your fabric's not going to go all the way to the end of your zipper. And you're going to keep your zipper zipped up for now. And you'll see that you have the end extending past your fabric. That's perfectly the way it should be. And then you're going to go about setting up the other side the exact same way. And just place your clips or your pins, whichever you're using, to hold that fabric in place. And so you can have the same thing here at the other end of your zipper. Your zipper pull is down here. We have our zipper closed when we're installing our zipper. Okay. So then you're going to take it to your machine. And we're going to be sewing on the right side of the zipper. Okay. And your zipper foot is going to be set down so that it's touching the very edge of the center of the zipper right here, where your zipper teeth are. And you're just going to place that under here. And if you have the zipper down, I'm um, not zipper down. <laughs> The needle down rather for your machine you'll want to put keep your needle down as you're sewing so when you stop your needle is going to stay in place and your fabric and your material aren't going to shift if your machine doesn't have the needle down just take your hand wheel turning it toward you just put your needle down when you stop before you do anything else that way nothing shifts or moves and some of you um, don't have an automatic uh, where your foot lifts when you stop sewing. That's fine. You may have a little lever either, you know, in the back or to the side where you have to put your presser foot down before you start sewing. And I'm just checking here because I want to make sure that when I put my foot down, that my foot is touching. And I can see in the back here that my foot is touching right up against the teeth of my zipper. 
and that's what I want. I don't want it to be sitting on top of my zipper or closer to my zipper than where it's touching the side of the teeth because I don't want to sew into my zipper, but I want to sew very close to my zipper. I'm going to turn the speed of my machine down. I'm a little heavy footed when we sew and I don't want to end up sewing too fast and get this mess aligned. And usually what I do is I just press my fabric down a little bit so that I can see my, well, you can't see it, but you can feel your zipper in the center. And I'm gonna hold it to the left side while I'm sewing. And like I said, when you stop, you need to take a pin out or a clip out. If you have a machine where it doesn't keep the needle down, just turn your hand wheel before you pull your pin or clip off. Okay, and I'm just feeling to see, make sure I'm still aligned, that my foot's still aligned with that center of the zipper against the zipper teeth. I continue to sew. You want to keep your fabric straight as you're going through. You just keep that foot pressed up against your teeth. Once that's done, you're going to bring your fabric down and we're going to check to make sure that we didn't sew into our zipper teeth, that we stayed to the side. And we did good. So I just finger press at this point my fabric down. And you can see that now we have our fabric on the right side of the zipper. And we're going to give that a little press. stay in to the side while we're doing the other side of the zipper. I just smooth my fabric out as I'm going along to make sure that it's going to stay nice and flat after I've pressed it. thread so that they don't end up when I get to the next part get caught in my zipper there okay so now we have our zipper flipped around we have our zipper pull up here and we have our zipper stop down at the other end 
And now we're only seeing half of our zipper because we've sewn this piece on. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to fold your fabric in half. Find your center mark. Just do a little finger press there so you can see where the fold was. And you're gonna turn your fabric upside down so that it's, whoops, we're going to, now, when your fabric goes down this time, it's going to go on top of your other fabric, right side down, on top of your zipper, and we're going to be matching up both edges of our fabric on top of our other fabric along with the center. So I'm going to put those two, the center mark on my zipper, on the left side of my zipper, with that fold mark. And place a pin there. And I'm wanting to make sure that my both of my fabrics are meeting up on the sides. Even if I have to adjust in the center where my pin is, that would be fine. It's more important that these fabrics are laying directly on top of each other. And my fabric's gonna be all the way to the end of my zipper. I'm going to put a little clip on that, on this side, just so that I know that that's meeting up on that side. And I'm going to check on this side, that they're both together, and I'm going to clip on that side, and that just keeps those two pieces of fabric equal. And everything's laying pretty nice, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip from the center out. Same thing. I'm going to be making sure that my fabric is right up to the edge of my zipper. And I'm going to clip as I go along. And you've got your zipper looking like that laying on your fabric underneath. first time that I did this with this job, it felt a little odd to me to be doing your zipper like this, but now that I've gotten used to it, it doesn't seem as complicated. Okay, now that I've got that all clipped up. Now, I have to, because this is a two-sided foot, I'm going to take my foot out, and I'm going to move it to the right side. I know that's kind of crazy, you're putting it on the right side of your zipper foot, but you're going to be sewing the left side of your zipper, but that's how it works, or at least this one does. And I'm going to move my needle over to the right position for doing this zipper foot. Just check your manual to see how yours works. Oops. And we're still going to be sewing from the top, but on the left side of our zipper, down. Now, if you have one, um, there are some zipper feet that you just have to turn it the other way. Yours maybe doesn't have the left and right side and so you would just turn your zipper the other way and sew it from the bottom up to the top 
I've seen machines that have feet like that. One of my older machines did it that way. But with this machine, I have the zipper foot that you sew from the top down, but you just switch the side that your foot's on. And I'm gonna let's see if I can get this a little better so you can see. I'm gonna fold my fabric over so it's not up against my machine over here. Because when your fabric's touching your machine your the side of your throw over here, it pushes your fabric this way. And so to keep my fabric nice and straight as I'm sewing, I'm just gonna fold this kind of almost in half, not quite. So it lays kind of flat as it's going through and it will be a smoother transition going through. Once again, I'm going to get my stuff lined up so that my foot will be, I have my thing catching, up against the air. And I'm just going to check it, lower my foot, and give it a feel and see. I need to back this up a little bit so I can be able to start with my fabric. So, and I want to make sure that my zipper stays aligned. I'm going to put a clip back here so I keep that aligned. And I'm just going to get this lined up so that my foot's going to lay down where I want it to. There we go. My foot is right to the side of those teeth, pressing up against it. You might have to move your zipper pull out of the way, flip it up, and we'll sew this side. And you're just going to be paying attention to keeping your fabric straight as it goes through and keeping your foot so it's pressed up against your zipper teeth. Sometimes it helps if you just kind of press right here so that you can almost see the edge of your zipper teeth right there so you know that you're pressing up against it but not sewing on the teeth. to fold my fabric back. And what I should have done when I was already on the other side, I'm just going to finger press that back and I'm going to move my zipper foot back to the other position where it sews on the right side. I should have done this actually before I put this on, although it doesn't matter because it's not going to affect anything. But we're going to on the first piece that we put on. Once you got it laid down and you got it pressed, 
you would put it back on that same side with your presser foot pressed up against your tees on the right side of your zipper tees. Let's go to the tails. There. And you just want that back side of your zipper foot pressed right up against the teeth. And we're going to do a stay stitch across this side. zipper foot moved over just a little bit on me, but I kept it straight as I was going down through, so it's fine. And so you can see that now we have our stay stitching going on the right side, which will hold this fabric in place so that when you're trying to zip it, you don't have this folding up and getting misaligned. It just holds that fabric in place. I didn't care that I was using white there because this is going to be a hidden zipper. So if if you wanted, when you make your back, you don't have to have a hidden zipper. <clears throat> if it's easy, if you feel it's easier for you or you like it better, you could just do stay stitching across the left side. And it would be fine. And you could just leave your zipper open. Some people like to do it that way. They don't want to have to try to flip it up. And let me show you on this pillow how it is. So with my hidden zipper, I have a flap, which is what I'm going to be showing you next. I have a flap that comes over and it hides my zipper underneath. And that's what I'm going to show you next, how to do that part. But if, when you're stuffing your pillow, sometimes it can feel a little awkward getting your pillow in um, between the zipper when you have that flap down. But I like the, the flap coming down because it hides my zipper and it makes the back of my pillow look um, just more flush with the fabric and gives it a little bit of a different look. And if you have children around, um, they won't be unzipping your pillow and zipping your pillow because it will be more hidden. So I always kind of like that a little bit better. I have a cat who, if my zipper pull was sticking out, she would be constantly messing with the zipper pull and biting on it and it would be a problem. So I find that this works a little bit better for me. And I'm going to switch out my thread, which I didn't do. It was, it was white, but since this is going to be a hidden zipper, no one's going to see that I used white on top of the red. But I wanted you also to be able to see um, in the camera how the stay stitching went across on that side, on the right side. I'm going to switch this over because I'm going to be doing a stay stitching after I get my new thread in on the other side, and I'll show you how that works in just a moment since I find my new thread. A 
was so exerting, so initiating, because my eyes were having a hard time seeing to so I can either look or I saw it. this. And I was like, oh, this is neat. And I just press a button. And that's right there for me. It's pretty nifty. Okay. Anyways, away from the machine. I'm not trying to sell machines. <laughs> I'm trying to teach a class. So. We're going to smooth that out. We've done our finger press up against there and just smooth it out and we're going to take our iron and we're going to do a press and we're pressing and not ironing because we don't want to stretch our fabric before we get all of our stitching in so everything stays aligned the way that we want it so we're just doing a press Set that iron here because we're going to need it in just a moment. So I'm going to take my, I'm going to take this fabric I've got my zipper pull on this side and I've got my zipper stop on the other side. And I'm taking that longer piece of fabric and I'm going to bring it down over the zipper. Oops. <laughs> Put that right out of place. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be measuring. Try to get this around so that you can see what I'm measuring. But from my... From the, this edge of my fabric here, make sure that that's going to make it over here. Pretty sure that it is. I can't see it now because it's hidden. Anyway, I know I did two inches, so I'm going to take my ruler and I just want to see that I'm bringing it down two inches past where I sewed it before. So the very edge of my fabric. And I'm gonna pull it down until I see that I have a flap that is going to be two inches. So it's at the end of my ruler. And I'm measuring right from the top of the fabric on the zipper on that side. Let me move my fingers out of the way so that you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So I have my two inch mark right here. I'm hoping that you can see that well. And then I'm gonna bring my fabric down to the end of my ruler and I'm gonna fold it over and I'm gonna put a clipper, you can put a pin there because I want this to stay nice and straight on this side and so I'm going to clip it there and you're wanting to keep your your flap that you're creating straight up against the edge so all your fabric is staying nice and flush and straight and then we'll turn it to the other side And we're going to do the same thing on this side that we did on the other side. I'm going to take my ruler. I'm measuring from there, the edge of my fabric, and I'm going down two inches. And I'm going to make sure that my fold, the end of my flap, is right at the two inch mark. And I'm going to check to make sure that everything's straight and aligned with each other. And I'm going to put a clip there. And I actually put two clips just so that it holds nice and tight. <coughs> and then I'm going to finger press that down. 
so that it's nice and smooth. And I know that it's straight because I've cut both sides. And I'm just going to press it with my fingers. And I can see that it's staying straight. It's on the fold there. It's on the fold on the bottom. And I'm going to do a press. Just so I can make that fold nice. So that as I'm sewing, everything's going to stay nice and straight for me. So then I'm just going to go across where the fold is and I'm going to place some pins in here so it stays straight. I'm going to take this mat out where I'm going to end up with my pins sticking in my mat. And I'm just going to place some pins. Now, the first time I took this class, I made a mistake and I sewed on this side of the fold. And then when they said for me to open my zipper, my zipper was definitely hidden because I had sewed the wrong side of the flap and it didn't work very well because I couldn't even get to my zipper. We're going to do another stay stitching which is on the left side of that zipper which if you run your finger along this side you can feel where the teeth are and I just kind of run my finger, my fingernails along the edge or you could even take one of your clips and run it up and you know against if you don't have fingernails that's fine but it just helps you to see where your zipper is going to be getting stitched now if you have a foot like mine where it flips which side you're sewing on the the side of the zipper. I have my zipper pull at the top over here. If you have one that is, you know, a one-sided uh, zipper foot, you can always start from the bottom sewing. It just depends on your machine and how your zipper foot works for it. And once again, I'm aligning the edge of my zipper foot. I've flipped my zipper pull up out of the way and I'm just trying to get my this lined up so that my zipper foot is going to be up against the zipper teeth. Yeah, it's lined up pretty good so now I can put my needle down to hold that in place. I can kind of see my crease where I've made a little bit of a crease there so I could see the edge of my teeth. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this side. And I just hold my fabric so that it stays nice and straight on this side. And I've got my hand here to kind of steady it so it doesn't waver back and forth while I'm sewing. that trace a little bit. I just want to make sure I'm staying aligned and not, you want to make sure you're not sewing on top of your zipper teeth. Well, we'll be checking later in a minute to see how good I did. And I just smooth it out as I go. 
they might increase, make sure I'm aware. The edge of my zipper is. going down through. Let's see. If it stayed straight. I did not. Let's see. As I got down this way, I lost track a little bit of where I was sewing. Not a super lot. Let me check real quick. Now, if that happens, like it just happened to me, that's fine. I might as well make a mistake with you. So you can see how we would fix it. So not always perfect in everything that we do. I do want it to stay somewhat straight so that my pillow will look nice. Not that anyone's going to be really looking at the back of my pillow, but still... I'm just going to pull that stitch. I'm just going to, yeah, this guy seemed removable. Yeah, here's how not to use your sandpaper. It's not cooperating with me. Oh, I see what happened. When I pressed my fabric, I accidentally kind of double folded my fabric <clears throat> and so it folded over where I didn't want it to fold over so I misaligned my fabric entirely so it's a good thing I checked that because my measurements would have been way off I'm just going to flip this up out of the way where I can get my seam ripper in here and I'm going to take these stitches out and if this happens to you just have your seam ripper handy. And once I get this out, I'll show you what mistake I actually made here. It's all fixable. It's not a big deal. You're just taking out that stay stitching. <clears throat> the original stitching to my zipper is still there. I'm just taking out that stay stitching that I did on the top. Actually, I can take my clips off because I'm going to have to repress this. Yeah. I'm usually a little more proficient with my seam ripper, but today think because I have kind of a double fold going on here. I mucked up how I pressed it. My seam ripper doesn't want to rip the way I want it to. Let me see if I'm not pulling it very well. Nope. Not today. This has been one of those weeks where if it could follow up for me, it has. I think we all have those weeks. And I'm sharing one of my video. I'm down to my last 20 inch zipper and I didn't have any, any more in hand. So we're just gonna, instead of starting over, we're just gonna see. Okay, and I'm going to take my pins out, and I'll show you how you fix my mistake. Now, as you can see, down here, when I pressed it over, instead of it staying, let me see, flat, I've got an extra crease here. And it started like right about here, 
and I ended up with an extra fold that I shouldn't have had. It should have been flat like that, and I should have had my flap come over and lay on top of it nice and flat, and I didn't. So when I got to about there, my foot got pushed out due to this extra fold, and so it wasn't a straight stitch. But now I found my mistake, and we're just going to fix it. Part of life, not every day does everything go perfectly the way that we want. And we just adjust to it and fix it. Whoops, here I am telling you not to iron back and forth. And that's what I was doing. Don't do what I did. I'm supposed to be pressing, pressing. Okay, so now I have that pressed down. I'm going to go to the back side and I'm going to take out these extra threads from where I did my seam ripping, which is going to make a nice little mess all over. We'll get those little pieces of thread off of there. Yeah, all right, good enough. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to check and pull out these extra threads them out of my way and they won't later on catch into my zipper when I unzip it and zip it back up. All right, let's see, just a couple more. My tooth is being held here. these extra threads out. There, I think we got them all now. Now the funniest thing was this morning when I woke up, I thought it was Wednesday. <laughs> and I thought yesterday was Tuesday. I lost a day someday, sometime this week. I don't know where I lost it, but if you find it, let me know. But yes, I lost a day this week. I'm not sure how that happened. Okay, well, you're going to get to see this step twice. <clears throat> okay, we're going to, I'm going to give that just a little more of a press here. So I can try not to duplicate what I did. Okay, so I'm going to fold my fabric back down. I'm going to give it a finger press here. Going along to keep it nice and straight. Or at least that's my goal. down here. Okay, so once again, we're going to take the end of our ruler. We're going to be measuring from the edge of our fabric there against the edge of the zipper. Or you can just hold it up against the edge of the zipper. So the zipper is all the way underneath your ruler. And we're going to bring our fold down 
to the two inch mark. Straighten it out over here. And I can see the crease where it got misaligned. That's okay, it'll come out when I press it again. I'm gonna make it sure that this is over here, flat against the other side. I'm gonna double check that I'm not folding it underneath there again the wrong way. And I'm gonna check my measurement one more time. I always like to check my measurement twice before I cut or I sew. Okay, I'm gonna get my clip in there. I'm gonna put two like I did before just to hold it in there. I'm gonna double check that to make sure I didn't fold and I didn't. I'm gonna bring it around to the other side. And then I'm going to do the same on this side. It's a little harder with that pull in the way, but I'm going to make sure that the end of my ruler is over here, up against the edge of the fabric on the end. And I'm going to bring my fold down to the two inch mark. Flatten this all out so I'm getting it nice and straight. Check that it's lined up well there. Double check to make sure I haven't folded it wrong. I'm gonna check my measurement again because I just moved that fabric. Oops. Wrong end. Hmm. Let me check this one more time just to make sure it's a little off. want to do the same thing on this side to me, so I'm just going to make sure I'm holding this down nice and tight. And check my measurements here. Tiny bit off. Get that lined up. Okay, and I'm at the two inch mark. I've got everything lined up on the edge here. Where I will have, there we go. Put my clips in. Think of press it across, and now I can see how it definitely is off. We'll do a press so that we can get that fold right. this a little bit. Spritz a little too much there, but that's okay. I'm just spritzing it a little bit so I can get my fold to crease nicely. like my mistake never happened. Usually on a wool mat you don't need to spritz, but because I had that extra fold showing I wanted to get it out. Let's 
so I don't see it when I'm done. Okay, here we go. Once again, I'm gonna make a lot of this mat out of my way. So I'm not pinning to the mat. And I'm just gonna put some pins in over to this side where I won't be sewing. Just to hold that fold down in place. As I'm sewing the other side. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay, once again, I'm gonna run my fingernail a little bit against the edge of that. I've got a few little threads poking up here. I've got this handy, I got this one, <laughs> Seaside as well. It's a handy seam, zip, um, seam ripper that has this little side that helps you when you've done seam ripping. Pull those extra stitches out of where you sewed. It's a little quicker than going through it with uh, tweezers and grabbing every single piece. It just brings them up out of the fabric for me and gets them out of my way. Okay, let me get that done. I'm going to run our nail or a clip or whatever against the teeth of the zipper, just so I can see where I want my foot to line up. I've got my zipper pull at the top here. Like I said before, you might have a different foot and you might be sewing from the bottom up. Either way, it works just fine. It just depends on your machine and what zipper feet go with your machine. I'm going to put that down, check it, make sure that the teeth are up against the edge of the foot. And we're ready to sew. as I go down through so I can make sure I'm staying up against that different teeth. George, I think we got it this time. Still have a couple of pieces of thread that are bugging me. I'll get the rest out later. Okay, so I'm checking. I see that I am lined up where I needed to be. I'm not sewn into the teeth. I'm going to check that underneath again. Oh, it came out so much better this time. We didn't end up with that funky fold. Okay. Great. Now, I'm going to do... Let me see, i got to get this foot off. Go 
that to a straight stitch. Kind of nice look for that. And I'll go this way. I'm going to do a little stay stitch right here. Just about oh, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to sew back and forth a couple times here so that I can create a new stop because I'm going to be cutting, I'm going to be cutting this edge of the zipper off and it's past where my zipper stop is on the end here. So I have to create my own zipper stop by sewing back and forth before I cut that off. So about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm going to sew it that way. Then I'm going to put my machinery's first. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to do that a couple of times. Just to make sure that my zipper can't go past that point. just did kind of a stay stitching. They're a little bit bigger of stitches. That's fine. It's just going to create a stop so my zipper won't go past that point. And I'm going to trim these threads so that they're out of the way. Don't want those getting caught in the zipper. And I never use my good scissors when I'm doing this. I just want to use some junky old scissors. And you're going to cut this edge off of your zipper right up to your fabric. I'm just going to clip that off. And your scissors with a little, just a little tiny effort will go through the zipper. And in case I didn't mention this before, I'm using a polyester zipper with the plastic zipper teeth. Just makes it easy to cut it off. Okay. Now, you're going to let me get that thread out of there. Okay. So now you're going to open your zipper up. Without getting your fabric caught in there, just hold that open. This is one we could use three, three hands, I swear. I'm just going to open it up almost to the halfway mark. It doesn't have to be exact, <clears throat> just out of the way. And then you're going to press your zipper back together so that it, it's like it was closed with the zipper. Pull, and I'm going to push a pin in this way to keep it in that closed position. But I want the teeth to lay flat up against each other, like so, like as if I had the zipper pull, pulled all the way. And I like to put a couple of pins in and I put them in opposite directions. I just feel that it holds it together better for me. And I just, once again, I check to make sure that my zipper is nice and flat, but the teeth are together. I'm going to bring it over to my machine, and I'm going to stay stitch here the same way that I did on the other end. And before you start sewing, just make sure 
that your zipper teeth are flat, but up against each other. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to reverse. And I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times. So now I have my stay stitching down at the end. I can take my pins out. And I'm going to clip this side off. Because now that I have my stay stitching in, my zipper pull isn't going to go past that point. We're actually going to be sewing <clears throat> a little further up than that. And when we do, we'll do the same thing and we'll go back and forth. But for now, I just wanted to put those stay stitches in just to make sure that I got that all set. And now I cut that end off and we can throw those away. Okay, that looks good. So now you're going to take your, I know this is the bottom here of my pillow back and this is the bigger piece is my upper part so I'm going to take my pillow top and I want to make sure that the top of my pillow is going to be lined up with the top and the bottom is going to be lined up with the bottom and I'm going to lay this on top of the bottom and I'm going to get my pieces lined up And I'm going to clip or pin my way around. Make sure everything's laying nice and flat. And then I'll start pitting and clipping. You just want to make sure that as you're pinning and clipping that you're not folding either side of the fabric over and creating it to, to fold so it won't stitch in your seam as you're going along. And I'm just going to place a few going along the bottom here. And then I'll do each side. And I always cut my fabric from my pillow backs an inch or two longer than when I know I'm going to need them. It gives me a little give room so I don't have to worry about if it wasn't exact that it's not going to meet up when I go to do this part. And we're going to trim that off in just a second so that it's the right size. Just want to keep going along and making sure that those are even. I'll get this side clipped. And see, when I check this side, see how my back isn't all the way up to the edge? You always want to double check. make sure that you have it lined up properly. I'm telling you, I'm having one of those weeks where things aren't always want to do what I want them to do. It's going to be on the bottom right. Oh, 
Okay, let me get that bottom again. Now that I got that fixed. So we're going to take our cutting mat, and as you can see, we've got extra fabric down on this side. And we want our backing to be the exact same size as our top. are going to be in my way. I'll take those out for a second. Move this on to my uh, cutting mat. And I'm going to line the edge of my ruler up with the edge of my top. And my cutting. You want to keep your fingers away from the edge of your ruler when you're doing the cutting. You're going to want your blade to be up against your ruler. And I'm going to cut across that back there. I'm going to hold my ruler down until I make sure that yep, I got through my fabric. And I'm going to take these clips out for a minute. Once again, I'm going to line my ruler up with the edge over here. And there we go. Clip that extra thread on. back up. Yeah, my kitty thinks she wants to come up and help. She's my little supervisor. Now, some people like to do um, a half inch seam when they're doing these. I'm just going to do a quarter inch seam. It's going to be perfectly fine. Some people have a serger and without cutting your fabric, set your serger up and you can serge the edges. And what you have available to you to use. I have a serger, but I'm not an expert with it by any means. And sometimes I'll search the edges of like my tote bags or and whatnot. 
to give them a little extra strength and keep them together, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. So, you want to start sewing so that you're a quarter of an inch Frixion pen. So I know where I want my needle to go. And you can go around each corner. I just do a guesstimate. But you can go around each corner and make a quarter inch mark so you know where to stop sewing for when you want to pivot and go around the corner. And we're going to sew this. We're going to start at one corner. And we're going to sew all the way around until we get back to that corner. When we get to the side that has the zipper, I had only done stay stitching in there, kind of like a basting stitch. We're going to go back and forth. This will be a tighter stitch and we'll lock it down better. And so we're going to do that when we come back around. Okay. Now, you could be using your walking foot for this so it doesn't pucker as you go. I'm going to I set my machine to know that it's sewing through um, heavier layers of fabric. So it's going to give it a little more pressure with my presser foot. I'm just going to go a little bit slow and make sure that I'm not lapping over my fabric or creating any hookers. I'm going to hold it down on this side and here so I can keep it going through nice and smooth. And I'm just doing a quarter inch seam on the side. Like I said, you could do a half an inch if you wanted or three-eighths of an inch. see where my zipper is going to be and my zipper is right here so I'm going to put a pin right in this corner so I can see where I need to okay I'm at my zipper right where the teeth are Checking here. And I'm going to sew forward and back a couple of times just to extra secure that zipper. And you can hear it and feel it when it goes over the teeth so you know that you're catching it. And then I'm just going to go forward down to my next corner. And then when I get to my quarter of an inch, I'm just going to pivot my fabric. That's out of my way. Okay, and the same thing. I'm just going to do each side. This is the top part. Thank you. 
two a zipper on this part. I'm going to do the same thing. Just above it, my zipper down. times. Okay, now we left our zipper open. If you want, you can open it just a little bit more. And we're going to poke our pillow through to the right side. You can just gently ease your, your pillow through. So it's coming through the zipper. And comes out to the right side. And I just take my fingers and I'm going to go and poke out my corners. So many different tools to help you with poking out your corners. So you can get them squared off as best possible. And you're just going to do that in each corner. Poke it out with your finger first. As far as you can get it. And then sometimes when my corners stay folded in and they don't want to poke out for me the way that I want them to, sometimes I'll use a pair of tweezers. And I'll just grab a hold of the fabric from this side and just ease it out. You don't want to pull too hard. You don't want to pull your stitching out. Just get your corner as square as possible. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. No one's going to notice on the pillow. Uh oh. Now see, here's another thing. We didn't quite catch our two fabrics together. Definitely showing you a bunch of mistakes today. <laughs> so, we'll just fold this back around. Now that we've seen that that happened. Oh, I see what happened. My fabric moved over on me. I'm telling you, I'm having a day. Having a day. Okay. Yeah, my fabric moved over a little bit on there. I don't know what was going on. 
Double checking my zipper. Yeah, the rest of that seam went just fine, but my fabric pulled over to the side a little bit, even though I had it clipped. And so I didn't catch the last of that fabric. But now we have it all nice and fixed. No one will even know that happened. Except for you, but don't tell anybody. So as you can see, even when you've done these multiple times, mistakes can happen. Now the next pillow that I do, a tutorial one, we're gonna sew it a different way instead of sewing it around backwards like that, we're going to be doing a binding around the edges to practice binding, which will be fun. And then later down the road, I will probably, once I find my piping foot, I will show you how we can put piping in the, in the, around our edges of our pillow. Okay. And I usually go and take this afterward. I get all my, get this all smoothed out nice, laying flat. And then I will do a press on my seams to lock that all in place. But there you go. Oh, I didn't get that corner quite the way I wanted. and just edge that out a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. Like I said, once I get this all smoothed out nice, my layers laying the way that I want them, I'll go through and do a press along the edges to set my stitches and my seams. But there you go. You have your star heart form pillow cover and now we've seen how to do our hidden zipper back and you just open your zipper up now stuff your pillow in there get it in there um, nice and neat that's a little bit of a project sometimes you just got to push your corners up in to each corner from your form pillow zip it back up after you get your pillow in which I'm not going to display on this one because I, my pillows came so that they were all flat and they have to be aired for a little while to puff out. But there you go. That's your pillow cover. I hope that you have found this tutorial to be helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them. Um, tag me if you want. Usually I see most notifications and most questions and I'll be happy to answer and, and help you the best that I can. I hope you've enjoyed this today. Happy sewing!